lagi yang kepada Bapak Ibu sekalian yang sudah bergabung dalam webinar kita hari ini. Perkenalkan saya Kartina, saya senang sekali pada kesempatan pagi ini akan membantu Bapak Ibu sekalian. Tapi kita akan informasikan sedikit materi yang dibawakan akan dalam bahasa Inggris. Namun jangan khawatir, saya akan standby apabila Bapak Ibu ada pertanyaan dalam bahasa Indonesia. Jadi bagi Bapak, Bapak dan Ibu yang ingin mengajukan pertanyaan, mohon langsung saja menuliskan pertanyaan pada kolom chat atau kolom komentar. Nah, ke kepada Bapak Ibu sekalian, sedikit perkenalan mengenai Plastic and Rubber Indonesia. Plastic and Rubber Indonesia merupakan pameran plastik dan karet terbesar di Indonesia, sudah diselenggarakan lebih dari 30 tahun, di mana pada penyelenggaraan 2019 lalu terdapat lebih dari 500 peserta pameran, serta 6 grup pavilion internasional yang berasal dari 20 negara. Tentunya, salah satu peserta pameran kita itu juga dari Mitsubishi Gas Chemical ya Bapak Ibu. Nah, pameran itu tidak hanya merupakan kunci untuk membangun kembali ekonomi atau berbisnis, namun juga dapat dikatakan sebagai salah satu wadah yang tepat untuk mencari solusi atau bertukar informasi. Dari sisi kami sebagai penyelenggara pameran, selain mengadakan pameran, penyelenggaraan webinar juga salah satu bentuk solusi digital saat ini. Sehingga kita tentunya dapat berbagi informasi lebih cepat, mudah, terjangkau, dan lebih luas lagi. Nah, di berikutnya Bapak Ibu, sebelum kita mulai lagi, sebelum kita mulai ke dalam pokok acara hari ini, perkenankan saya untuk menginformasikan beberapa aturan rumah yang perlu Bapak Ibu ketahui. Demi kelancaran acara dan kenyamanan bersama, kami informasikan kami akan mematikan suara dan kamera Bapak Ibu sekalian. Sesi webinar hari ini akan kami rekam dan Bapak Ibu dapat melihat hasil rekaman selambat-lambatnya dua hari kerja setelah webinar dengan menemui website kami di www.plasticandrubberindonesia.com. Kami juga akan mengadakan sesi polling di mana kami mohon kesediaan Bapak Ibu sekalian untuk dapat berpartisipasi agar kami dapat mengadakan webinar yang lebih baik lagi dan selanjutnya untuk menjalankan kebutuhan Bapak Ibu sekalian. Tentunya webinar hari ini akan kami akhiri dengan sesi tanya jawab. Kami ada special guest untuk um, pada web, uh, pada saat Q&A nanti. Jadi Bapak Ibu mohon standby sampai akhir acara ya. Nah, kepada Bapak Ibu yang ingin majukan pertanyaan, kembali kami informasikan bahwa dapat menuliskan pertanyaannya dengan menggunakan tombol Q&A serta menuliskan kepada siapa pertanyaan tersebut ditujukan. Pada akhir kata, apabila Bapak dan Ibu memiliki pertanyaan lebih lanjut atau ingin bergabung di webinar kami selanjutnya untuk persiapan tahun depan nih Bapak Ibu, untuk promosi tahun depan ya, Bapak Ibu dapat mengganggu kolega saya dengan Pak Rian at pamerindo.com selaku event manager dari PT Pamerindo Indonesia. Baik, selanjutnya pada webinar Tech Talk hari ini kita akan menghadirkan narasumber yang menyajikan analisis terupdate dari Mitsubishi Gas Chemical itu sendiri di mana mereka akan membawakan informasi lebih detail mengenai bagaimana sih caranya siklus kemasan bisa lebih panjang. Terus tentunya di mana siklus tersebut itu pastinya akan menghemat biaya dan akan lebih baik lagi untuk alam kita. Cuma yuk kita dengerin langsung dari Mitsubishi Gas Chemical. Oke, okay, welcome and good morning to our speakers today. Hi Rian. Hi, Mr. Albert. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Morning. Good morning to you both. Morning. And, um, morning. Yeah. Okay. So um, I will just let Albert to take the stage. The e stage is yours, Albert. Thank you so much. So I, I would like to thank you all attendees uh, who are spending your time this morning to be with us. Uh, I would like also to inform you that uh, the registered attendees, uh, the numbers are quite. Uh, significant, so I hope the numbers will increase as uh, time passes by. I would also like to thank uh, the panelists who are with us today. Uh, this includes uh, our support staff from uh, uh, Japan, MGC Japan, as well as uh, our guest co-hosts, uh, which are the gentlemen from uh, Mova Color, uh, who are the specialists in uh, dosing systems. And uh, I would also like to thank uh, informal as well as Palmerindo for organizing this event uh, together with us so that we can share information about MGC's products and how we can help uh, manufacturers of bottles as well as beverages and drinks as well as even non-food and non-beverage uh, products to enable uh, them to face the challenges that are uh, posed by COVID and uh, hopefully uh, overcome these challenges for, for themselves as well as for the benefit of uh, customers. Um, I would also like to just uh, inform as per what uh, Ibu Katina mentioned, there will be a polling that will occur in the middle of the uh, presentation. So please do give us feedback uh, 
with regards to the poll questions so that we can come back to you. And, the, and anytime during the presentation, if, if you have any questions at all, please do post your questions to the Q&A box. And uh, what we will do is actually, we will try to look at the questions and we will try uh, to answer as many as possible uh, the questions posed in Q&A. Uh, and even if the questions are in Bahasa, so uh, I've requested for uh, Pama Indo to help us to translate uh, if we are unable to understand during the Q&A session. So feel free to post questions. We will try to respond during Q&A. Post Q&A, if there are still unanswered questions or outstanding questions that we need to follow up, we will follow up with you. Uh, thank you again for your time. So I will pass uh, the time over to Ryan so that he can start sharing with you what MGZ offers during this pandemic uh, period. Thank you so much for your participation. Okay, hi, good morning. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Albert, for the introduction and for the coordinating of all this. Uh, first, I would like to thank Ibu Katina and uh, Ibu Godi for the introduction of MGC and, all, and our company. So before I begin, like Mr. Albert, I would like to give special thanks to uh, PT Pamindo for arranging this webinar. So uh, today here with us, we have uh, like what Mr. Albert has mentioned, uh, Mr. Anders from Mobile Color, Miyabe San from Mitsubishi Gas Chemical Japan, Mr. Albert Lim and myself from Mitsubishi Gas Chemical Singapore. Uh, so I will first introduce our company in slightly more detail. So Mitsubishi Gas Chemical is a Japanese company headquartered in Tokyo. And we are a company that deals in chemicals from various industries such as methanol, which is a feedstock for chemical for various chemicals, uh, hydrogen peroxide for aseptic filling system for the beverage industry, oxygen absorbers for the food and pharma industry. So the team that are, present, that are present today come from MX Nylon, which is used for the packaging industry. So in this COVID-19 pandemic, we have all seen disruptions to supply chain globally, closure of food establishments during lockdowns, and empty shelves in convenience shops, such as the result of hoarding, of food hoarding and including paper product hoarding. This has further caused stress on the supply chain for food products where the export of food is restricted because countries are considering their citizens as a priority first. As a result, the requirement for longer shelf life has been magnified. Food packaging has also become a solution or have, become, have been considered a fail-safe where consumers are faced with the worry of contamination from the COVID-19 virus. I'm sure everyone would have heard of news where the COVID-19 virus has been found on the packaging of food products regardless whether it is on plastic, metal, or glass. Furthermore, with more people working from home, the sales of ready-to-cook and ready-to-eat food has gone up significantly. Therefore, in summary, COVID-19 has highlighted the need to ensure food security and availability through shelf life extension by reducing food loss and wastages. So by doing so, we have been able to enable higher value products. So let's look at all these different things in perspective. In the current market, most consumers believe that plastic is one of the biggest costs for greenhouse gas emissions or carbon footprint. Shall we now take a closer look at this emission value taken from a scientific online publication that focuses on large global problems called Our World in Data, which is funded by Oxford University and Melinda and Bill Gates Foundation. Okay, so let me just go in. So over here, we can see that the different colors represent the different activity, ranging from green, brown, orange, blue, red, yellow, and, oh, and uh, gray, which is mainly for uh, packaging. So if you look at all the various different products, for example, if you look beef, uh, prawns, pig meat, uh, poultry meat, fish, eggs, rice, and all this. If you notice, all this, the bulk of the emission of such gases are from the farming process as compared to packaging, which is highlighted in gray. So the emission of packaging is much lower regardless of whether it is glass packaging, 
aluminum packaging or even plastic packaging because all this packaging, different packaging will have different amount of greenhouse gas emission. But the idea or the purpose of all this packaging material acts as a solution to increase shelf life, value of the product, safety of the product, and making the environment and making Earth a more environmentally friendly. So packaging is a solution, not a problem. So let us next, next let us look at how MX Nylon is able to enable this solution. So what is MX Nylon? MX Nylon is an innovative barrier packaging material that offers excellent gas barrier properties, uh, compatible processing range with other materials, high tensile and flexural strength, and is free of additive and has excellent chemical resistance properties. So traditionally, most people believe that moisture is the biggest cause for shelf life of, in the food. Thus, PE and PP were developed. And these two resins have very good moisture barrier. However, people started to notice that oxygen is also causing a problem in shelf life. But PE and PP have one of the worst oxygen barrier properties. So in this slide, we have a comparison for general barrier resin, where PET is a common material that most consumers would know. And you will notice that PET has about 7 cc per meter square per day as its barrier. And when you compare it to a nylon-based film, or even films made from MX nylon, which is in pink and blue respectively, you will notice significantly significant improvements to the barrier properties of the films where nylon 6 will drop to below 1 and MX nylon will drop to below 0 0.1. So what does all this value mean? Assuming that a volume a oxygen concentration of 10 cc is required for the food to start to turn bad, it would only take about two days, mathematically speaking, for the food to start to turn bad for food pack in PET, whereas for food pack in nylon 6, it will take about 10 days. And in MX nylon packaging, it will take more than three months. These are all estimates, and the customers will need to perform some tests on their actual product because different foods are produced differently, prepared differently, and in different environments. So just now I have mentioned that MX Nylon has a wide range of processing temperature for suitable uh, for various materials. Over here, we can see that MX Nylon has a, has a range from 240 degrees to 280 degrees, making it compatible to be used with various materials such as PET, Nylon 6 or 66, and also with PE and PEP. The solutions for food and beverage packaging uh, are as follows. MX Nylon has also been used in rigid and flexible packaging and in some current applications. The sum of the current applications of MX Nylon can be found in PET bottles, films, and even in PP thermoform trays. With the rise of retort sterilization, packaging are required to endure higher temperature during processing. In the PET bottle application, by using MX Nylon in the same preform weight as the original PET preform, we are able to achieve an improvement of barrier properties by about 1.8 times for the blend, as compared or 2.4 times for the multi-layer. This, this extension is due to an increase in barrier property, and I will show you, and we will show you some data, uh, some examples later. So. In the, in the green tea in Japan, uh, most people would have traveled to Japan for holidays. And I'm sure that green tea in Japan is one of the most common drinks that people buy from the vending machine. But has anyone noticed that most of their teas are usually unsweetened, but it tastes as fresh as it has been freshly brewed? For people who have been brewing their own tea, you will notice that freshly brewed teas and teas that have been left in the open for about an hour will taste very different. But in this case, how has Japan brand owners been able to do this and keep the tea the taste the same as it was freshly brewed? What they have done is they have used barrier technologies in their PET bottle by using MX Nylon as a multi-layer bottle to extend the shelf life and to retain its color. So by doing so, you reduce the oxidation of the polyphenol counts in the PET, in the, in the green tea, 
thereby allowing them to sell all these products at a more valuable and a premium product. So as I mentioned previously, by extending the shelf life of the PET bottle, you are able to consider going for lightweighting, making it a more environmentally friendly approach by reducing the amount of PET use. So if you were to, let's say, if you were to look at 26.5 grams of PET preform as a normal mono layer, by reducing it to 20.5 grams, you are able to achieve the same shelf life by incorporating 5% of MX nylon blend. Or if you were to go to multi-layer, you will even, even though you have dropped the weight by six grams, you are able to extend the shelf life longer. So this is where MX nylon is able to help in all these various applications for the bottles. Other considerations, I believe most participants would have also drank some weird tasting mineral water or bottled water before. While we can easily brush it off as this is the standard taste of mineral or bottled drinking water, but more often than not, this taste change is normally due to the presence of acetaldehyde, more commonly known as AA. With the use of MX nylon in very small dosage, it at about 0.5 as compared to just now when I was talking about 5%, you are able to get 23% reduction in the AA content. So in this graph, you'll notice that the units are in microgram per milliliter. Some people will start to ask, how do I make sense of this unit? This unit is actually the same as PPM, or some people may know it as parts per million. So just now I have been talking about PET bottles, which is a common material. But what about other applications such as uh, flumes and sheets? Flumes and sheets, MX nylon can be blended into PA flumes and sheets to increase the barrier properties. Comparing in this graph, the standard OTR, oxygen transmission rate of a BOPA6 flume is 50 cc per meter square per day. However, when blending MX nylon into the barrier pop into this flume, you are able to improve the oxygen barrier, thereby reducing the amount of oxygen coming into the packaging, allowing for higher shelf life. Next, in the flumes and sheet uh, application, uh, MX nylon has also been used to improve thermal formability of a nylon 6 tray. So if you notice, normally for barrier trays, it is usually made up of three different materials, and one of the common materials is nylon 6. As a plastic processor, it is known that with increasing number of layers, the difficulties in producing such products increases due to the tightening of processing windows. However, with the use of MX nylon in this case, we have been able to widen the processing window for thermal forming by reducing the temperature of thermal forming as shown here from 115 degrees down to maybe 50 degrees, uh, down to 90 degrees, depending on the dosage of MX nylon that you use. Next, other than widening the processing temperature by a lot, we have also been able to extend or increase the stretch stability of this kind of firms. So MX nylon has been known, has been able to increase the stretchability or more commonly in the industry, we know, we know it as stretch ratio. Sometimes barrier properties and clarity of the flumes also increase with uh, improve of the stretch ratio. So as you can see here, 2.5 times by 2.5 times to maybe 3.5 times by 3.5 times. So this is a very much significant improvement. Other properties that MX nylon is also able to improve are mechanical properties such as tensile modulus, or simply put it, stiffness. To allow a higher, a nicer standing pouch that doesn't flop, as also with the mechanical strength of the OPA film. So some of the applications that multi-layer PA films has, uh, nylon films has been used, with the increase of adoption of heat sterilization method during food processing as a result of food safety, it is now common to see food color changing as a result of oxidation. In our daily life, when we cook meat or vegetables, 
food products will change color when exposed to high heat. We register this cooking, this color change as the transition of raw food to cooked food. However, when the food is cooked longer, we get burnt food where the color change changes to black. Likewise, with each heat cycle during the heat sterilization process, color of this food changes accordingly. However, with the use of MX nylon, we can reduce the oxygen ingress, thereby when heat is applied into a low or no oxygen environment, there is minimum color change to the food, allowing it to achieve its original color. One example over here is the tuna, where you notice the use of MX nylon containing film has enabled the tuna to retain the color, thereby enabling a higher value product. In another example, let us take a look at mango. This is a common material, this is a common product that people in Indonesia or in Southeast Asia will be very familiar with. If given the choice when making this two purchase or making this purchase, which sets of mango would you purchase? The top or the bottom? Personally, I would have chosen the, the mango at the bottom because the color of the mango is brighter and this means it is fresher. As a consumer, our brain has, our mind has been trained to identify brightly colored mango as fresh. However, after putting mangoes through a boiling process for sterilization, you notice that the packaging that was using MX nylon as a barrier material is brighter as compared to other barrier materials. Again, this is due to the reduction in oxygen ingress. I'm sure most people would have heard of this caption that I've heard during this advertisement. Any fresher and you have to peel it yourself. Because we all know that fresh product tastes better and it is more difficult to achieve, most consumers are willing to pay a premium for such product. So thereby allowing brand owners to sell a premium product. This is the same as how organic product costs a premium when no chemical pesticide is being used. So other than food packaging, MX Nylon has also been used in personal care and also in chemical packaging, such as bleach and industrial chemicals. In the bleach application, most of the time people will be familiar with HDPE bottles. However, one of our customers have actually moved from HDPE bottles to PET bottles. Initially, we found that PET would crack when exposed to bleach. However, by adding 5% of MX nylon, we have been able to remove this cracking issue even after 12 months as compared to three months. So let's look at the original PET monolayer. At 40 degrees, three months, the bottles actually cracked and bleach was actually leaked out. But when you compare it to a 40 degrees, for 12 months, there was no damage in our, in our test with the customer. Likewise, MX Nylon has been used to replace barrier materials in our customer who is producing barrier bottles for marker pen ink, where solvents are commonly used. So you are able to retain its tensile modulus and tensile strength, and also reduce the emission or the loss of solvents such as toluene, lamelene, and even for xylene. Other customers have also used MX nylon to improve or increase the stiffness of the bottle, thereby allow by making MX by using more MX nylon into by blending MX nylon into their nylon six layer, we have been able to increase the tensile modulus or the stiffness of the bottle. So increasing rigidity at the same time, improving barrier for the bottle. Other, in the final application, uh, MX nylon containing films have also been used in the preservations of aroma and odor properties of some barrier films. So in this case, if you notice, the aroma property of MX nylon, uh, MX nylon films are able to contain uh, lemonine, vanillin, methanol in a flexible packaging as compared to other materials such as LDPE or PET. With the rise of food scare, people have started to ask, materials, are these materials food safety? Have these materials been food contact approved? We are pleased to inform that MX Nylon has been approved in various bodies globally, such as Japan, 
US, Europe, and even in China. Next. With the topic on sustainable packaging being a big concern now, we are also pleased to inform that MGC has also embarked on a sustainable packaging development and we have invested in a consortium known as R Plus Japan Company Limited. This consortium works together to develop various recycling technology for used plastic waste. In this presentation, in this slide, you will also notice a few big and famous companies such as Santori, Topan, Yoshino, even Toyo Inc. In Japan, plastic other than PET bottles are reportedly and Excuse me. In Japan, plastic other than PET bottles are mostly reported being incinerated. However, the latest technology involves decomposing PET bottles and other plastic products directly to basic chemicals such as benzene, toluene, xylene, ethylene, or propylene. This approach is known as chemical recycling, or some industry calls this as advanced chemical, advanced recycling. By using technologies from analog, uh, this actually simplifies the recycling process where you do not need to go through a liquidation process and you are able to reduce the, pro the steps in this recycling steps. So the company aims to commercialize this technology in 2027 to help solve common global challenges associated with used plastics. And this process will include collaborations across various industries such as companies that collect plastics and monomers polymers producers, film packaging uh, producers, and even brand owners. In conclusion, MX Nylon can be used to enhance barrier property of your packaging, thereby increasing the shelf life of your product and reducing food loss. If you have any, if you require any assistance in your packaging, feel free to get in contact with us and we'll be happy to share our experience with you. With this, I have come to the end of my presentation. Our contacts are as shown in this slide. We will now proceed to the Q&A. Okay, uh, thank you, Ryan, uh, for uh, giving the presentation. I will now uh, actually proceed uh, to answer uh, the questions posed uh, in Q&A. And uh, feel free to continue sending your questions. At the same time, I would also request uh, that uh, uh, Palmer Indo send uh, the polling questions out. Yeah. So let me go through the questions. Uh, there has been uh, quite a number of questions and some of the questions uh, actually require a lot more time to actually explain. Uh, but uh, we will go through briefly and uh, we will uh, try to get back to you in depth uh, to resolve uh, your queries. So uh, first question, uh, there was a question in uh, whether uh, MX nylon, what does MX nylon function? Does it inhibit or does it uh, uh, have any impact on uh, recycling, uh, especially for PET? So uh, I think, uh, Ryan, can you go back to the page where uh, MX Nylon actually acts as an inhibitor for leaching, where we absorb the AA and the FA? Yeah, so the, the interesting part is when you do uh, recycling of PET, uh, and uh, typically this is a common problem now when uh, mechanical recycling is the big issue. Uh, the contamination or the leaching actually doesn't come from the nylon. It is actually from the degradation of PET itself due to the multiple heat processes. And you have the leaching of uh, actually plasticizers like acid aldehyde and, and actually formaldehyde. Uh, and actually this is the strange taste you get when you're using our PET. And the interesting part is uh, when you add a certain dosage of MX nylon inside, the MX nylon actually acts as a, well, uh, it inhibits the leaching of these chemicals uh, from degradation into the liquids. Uh, it actually is able to absorb uh, these chemicals. So it actually helps to enable uh, safer, uh, better recycling of PET at very low dosages. Uh, 
Uh, of course, the other challenges that are faced, uh, I, I think the question was talking about RPAT. So as, uh, as Ryan mentioned, uh, Ryan, maybe you can go back to uh, the chemical recycling. Yep. So in the whole world now, when people talk about recycling, the focus is on very simple recycling where you collect the bottles and you crush them. Uh, you make flicks and then after that you reuse, right? So uh, the, the thing is actually that is uh, a very simple to adopt technology, but it is not a perfect technology. Uh, MX Alon, when it is involved in this, actually we have got various qualifications from Japan and Europe, uh, where actually up to a certain percentage of MX Alon is allowed in the recycle stream. Uh, and actually, the challenge for the mechanical recycling plant is mostly just uh, some mild color changes that might occur or cosmetic changes that might occur. And uh, this is the challenge. So if you want to use recycle, but you want to look good, then, of course, the challenge is very difficult. Even PET itself, when we mechanically recycle, will have uh, cosmetic issues, right? Uh, typically, all polymers are made from uh, crude oil, or crude oil-based chemicals, and it, it's, it's due to oxidation right, and color change, why I change. So, however, if you, the focus is on just being able to recycle and if cosmetic issues are secondary, then uh, actually uh, MX Salon doesn't play any negative part to the, cost, uh, to the actual shelf life preservation and safety aspect of the packaging. So this is one thing that needs to be clarified. But as, men as you can see from the PowerPoint now, actually the goal is to actually achieve advanced uh, recycling whereby we are able to break down the plastics into their uh, component feedstock and able to use the feedstock to create new uh, polymers again. And uh, we are in the process of achieving this uh, via our partners in Japan. And hopefully this can actually be used to make good quality, uh, truly recycled, uh, clean uh, polymers in a very short future. Yeah. Uh, second question uh, from Supernova, which inquired whether these films uh, are available. Uh, and I believe Supernova is a probably extruder uh, slash uh, converter. So the, the films are available. Uh, and uh, you mentioned this term called super nail. So super nail is uh, from one of our uh, actually partners in uh, Japan where the films uh, that uh, uh, combine uh, MX Nylon with uh, BOPA is done. And uh, I, I think in Indonesia, uh, a lot of people are very familiar with nylon films uh, because you have a lot of bakery like lapis cake, cheesecake, uh, etc. A lot of nylon films are used, but uh, the challenge of those films typically is uh, thick, very difficult to actually uh, tear, and of course, uh, it's uh, uh, slightly uh, hazy. So in Japan, uh, most of the pillow packs and also even for foods, uh, they use this advanced material called um, uh, a super nail or similar products whereby the nylons are blended, the BOPAs are blended with MX nylon. It makes the film stronger, it increases the barrier properties to oxygen, as well as to volume loss and also to loss of CO2. Uh, and uh, you can go thin gauge. And at the same time, this reduces plastics usage, as well as increased shelf life. And very interestingly, when you can go thin gauge, you increase, increase clarity, and at the same time, because it is a blended nylon, it creates something that has never been uh, possible before. It is ab available to achieve an easy tear, straight tear uh, capability. So it's very easy for the customer to, to buy a pillow pack, for example, or even uh, a packet, uh, and then try to open it by uh, just easily uh, peeling off uh, through the notch. Uh, third question, uh, again, has to do uh, with uh, recycling. Uh, and I will state again that, uh, in interestingly, uh, MX Alon, as mentioned earlier in the presentation, is able to help to reduce the contaminants that are generated uh, from recycling. Uh, and uh, actually, it is uh, supporting uh, the recycling uh, process as long as 
the focus on cosmetics is not the prime uh, objective. If the objective is truly just to extend shelf life uh, and uh, cosmetic purposes are not the primary goal, then uh, MS Sauna is a good supporting additive to the R patch. Uh, next question that we have is, uh, is MX Nylon a copolymer? Uh, no, MX Nylon is not a copolymer. MX Nylon is a special polymer uh, that is based on metal xylene. Uh, Ryan, can you just go back to the uh, first few pages? Yeah, so uh, MX Nylon is actually a technology uh, from uh, Japan. Uh, it is unique in its chemical structure. And uh, if you can look at the metaxylene ring, that uh, is the uh, hexagonal ring uh, that is shown here. This is the uh, magic component where you stretch and this becomes plates. Uh, lined plates that are able to reduce the amount of oxygen incursion or CO2 upgassing. These plates, when stretched, becomes uh, a single layer uh, that uh, blocks uh, both moisture loss and oxygen loss or oxygen ingress. And um, also, uh, it can. The interesting thing uh, is for MX nylon itself, it can also be blended. So instead of buying multi-layer machines uh, where you have distinct layers. Uh, and Indonesia is one of the first uh, countries in Southeast Asia that actually has adopted PET with MX nylon blends into uh, bottles. We are experienced in Indonesia for oxygen water bottles. We are also involved in um, some um, uh, isotonic health drinks uh, where the preforms are actually blended and made in Indonesia. Uh, so the technology is easy. And at this point in time, uh, I would like to actually pass the, the, the uh, mic over to uh, Mr. Uh, Anders, who is from Mobile Color. Uh, he will share a little bit about simple technologies, existing injection machine with their dosing systems and you're able to achieve uh, high barrier bottles. So uh, Mr. Anders, please. Uh, can I request Power uh, uh, Indo to actually put Mr. Anders, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? So, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> first of all, to Mitsubishi Gas Chemical for, um, uh, for arranging this informative and, uh, <clears throat> and interesting seminar. Uh, I can see from the attendance, we are almost up to 100 people here, so I, I, can, I can tell it's been creating a big interest uh, on, uh, on this topic in, in the Indonesian industry. Uh, Muva Color, uh, we are a Dutch company and we specialize uh, in uh, manufacturing gravimetric uh, compact uh, feeders and dosing machines, which are used to feed uh, master batches, color master batches, uh, functional additives such as uh, MX nylon, uh, UV stabilizers, UV blockers, and so on. Uh, uh, regrind, we can also feed liquids and we uh, can feed powders, all in additives and different forms. So our machines are typically mounted on, on standard injection molding machines, uh, PET form uh, injection molding machines or caps closures uh, in extrusion applications such as uh, films for all kinds of, of film materials, but, but, uh, but also in PET and, and, and nylon film uh, uh, production. And um, our customers uh, typically choose Muba Color for uh, a few, uh, few good reasons. First of all, um, our systems are gravimetric. So <clears throat> when we, um, we feed the materials or the additives, we measure uh, the percentage which is required in the final product very accurately. 
And uh, of course, uh, by controlling the percentage, we also can guarantee uh, those claims we do in the market. For example, um, shelf life, which is important for, uh, for, for functional additives. It can be a UV resistance, it can be uh, barrier properties. Uh, so so all, the, all the functions uh, and, and claims we make for the product will, uh, will be guaranteed by the correct amount of material or additive in the, in the, in the product. Um, also color uh, is a very important aspect. So we need to have a very consistent and, and, and uh, uh, even uh, color uh, feeding to maintain the, the product uh, uh, quality and, and appearance. Um, Another reason why uh, Mova Color is used in, in the plastics industry as, uh, uh, as a gravimetric feeder rather than, for example, blenders, is that by feeding the materials directly into the, into the injection molding machine or extruder, uh, we guarantee that there is no separation of the two or three or four components or materials which, which, uh, which is in, in the formulation. It means that for example, using a blender, even a gravimetric blender, uh, you can have uh, 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 separation issues from the master batch, which is typically a different shape and size and, and, and density than the main material, for example, a PET or a regrind or a flake. So you get, uh, you get a, a kind of a variation in, in, in the process, but we feed it continuously straight into the injection molding machine or the, or, or the extruder. And that gives uh, a very uh, good quality and consistent quality. Another uh, benefit is when we can control the additives in, a, in, in, in such a way, uh, we mostly see cost savings. And um, everything from five to up to 30%, I've seen many cases, uh, compared to conventional blending of the additives and, and the virgin uh, resin is, is achievable. So we can get the quick, quick return of investment on, uh, on, uh, on this, uh, the feeders. Um, I, I can see typically we have a return of investment within one year for, for a master batch uh, dosing unit or an additive dosing unit. Uh, third thing, which is equally important, uh, is that uh, as we are uh, measuring the amount of uh, material, master batch or functional additive in each single shot of the injection molding cycle or each second of extrusion production, uh, we collect this data. So you will have a complete quality assurance of the full of the of the process second by second or, or shot by shot. And we can convert this into consumption research, uh, uh, consumption reports, or we can uh, 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 make sure that the in-house quality assurance is shot by shot, or we can uh, confirm that uh, certain uh, uh, limits are kept within the tolerances which we want to achieve when we export the products to, to for example, other countries where they have restrictions of in, to, in toy toy industry, you can have a, a higher limit of um, of the additive, which cannot be uh, be exceeded. Then you get the rejection of the whole whole production lot. And of course, in in packaging industry, we will talk about teas and we talk about uh, um, uh, shelf life. Uh, we want to make sure that each shot has been uh, assured to have the correct amount of master batch or functional additives in there. So uh, all our uh, units are also ISO, uh, sorry, um, uh, factory 4.0 compatible. So it can be linked to injection molding machines, extruders, and put into also a bigger, bigger system. So uh, this was a, a quite short and to the point uh, introduction to Mova Color. And if you have any questions, uh, please uh, contact again back to Mitsubishi Gas Chemicals or, or, um, or to to our website directly and uh, we can provide you with more information. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Anders, for sharing. Uh, I would like to highlight again that the dosing systems are available 
for multiple applications. And actually in Indonesia, this solution has been used for uh, the application into simple adaptation of MX Color and DPT for preform manufacturing. But at the same time, uh, mover color uh, square frame matrix systems are able to be applied to extruders as well. Um, I would also like to add, um, there are several questions, uh, more questions that came in. Uh, one is, uh, I would like to highlight that, um, even before the questions, that actually there are more advanced technologies that are available. Uh, Multi-layer uh, technologies for PET, MS, and long preforms. And uh, Indonesia is slightly lagging. Uh, there are already uh, adoption of the multi-layer technology, uh, preform technologies in Southeast Asia. So we hope to soon be able to see those technologies, uh, those multi-layer machines uh, from multiple source of uh, manufacturers coming into Indonesia. But in case the machines are not in yet, the easiest solutions are now available with uh, dosing systems like MOVA with our materials into PET preforms. At the same time, uh, there are a lot of questions about film. So yes, uh, we are already testing the blending of MX dialon uh, into even olefins as well as PET extruders uh, in Indonesia. And, uh, and actually in Indonesia, there are some systems that produce ultra high barrier films uh, with uh, OTR of uh, less than 0 0.14 maybe. Uh, CC per meter square per day. The systems are avail already available from Europe and they are actually al already available in Indonesia. Uh, difference is, I think the key difference is when you use uh, MX nylon into those products, uh, it solves a key challenge, which is actually pinhole resistance, right? Uh, as per nylons uh, in normal circumstances, uh, nylons provide not just barrier itself, but also yeah. pinhole resistance. And I hope uh, this is a key point that maybe uh, the film manufacturers can take back uh, in Indonesia. Next question is actually about uh, injection molding. And there was a question of whether MX nylon can be blended with PET and uh, actually glass fiber. So uh, Ryan mentioned that we are actually uh, majority into uh, packaging, but the truth is uh, maybe around 40 plus percent of MX alon is used into injection molding. Uh, the products are sold to related companies and non-related companies where uh, glass fiber is put. Uh, and actually in Indonesia, especially for the Japanese cars, uh, you actually are using uh, our material as an injection molded compound every day, but you don't know it. So it is into the uh, side mirrors, uh, mirror stays, as well as uh, the, the rear view mirrors, anti-vibration specialty nylons that are able to replace steel. Uh, key, key challenge uh, normally is this thing called tensile modulus. So uh, this material can be used in compounding. Um, the question was whether it can be blended with PET. I would suggest that the compounder please uh, look at uh, available patents to see uh, if uh, there's any existing patents that are covering this, because uh, the truth is uh, uh, there are some patents that are uh, involved when you blend GF with PET and nylons. Uh, but uh, please understand also that uh, MX nylon is different from uh, normal nylon. Uh, and uh, maybe this was not emphasized uh, because we have limited time. The, the truth is uh, normal nylon is the hygroscopy, right? Water absorption is really high. And uh, at the same time, the processing temperatures uh, may not be high enough. Uh, so there's a hygroscopy issue and there's a degradation issue and then there's a shrinkage issue, etc. Uh, so the, the strength of MX nylon is actually it's way lower hygroscopy or moisture absorption than the other nylons, which means uh, when you actually do compounding, uh, there's less hassle about the pre-drying. Right? And then at the same time, post-molding, uh, there is less hassle with uh, anisotropy or the warpage due to hydrolysis as well as uh, shrinkage. So uh, very good thing, technical uh, aspects of MX nylon that you can consider. And uh, finally, I think we have uh, uh, recycling companies that are interested to find out more what MX nylon can do to help them. So uh, we will get back to you.
uh, via our channels in Indonesia to see if it can be adopted to just as an additive to help you to uh, manage the AA and the FA uh, issues that you might be facing due to leaching. All right. Um, I think uh, we are almost time. We have a few minutes left. Um, I, I would like to maybe ask uh, uh, Japan, uh, Miyabe-san, do you have anything to add to our webinar uh, information? Uh, I will hand over the, uh, the mic to you. Uh, no, no, thank you, Arbat. Uh, what about Ryan? Do you have anything to add? Okay, yeah, thank you, Mr. Albert. Uh, I think most of the points have been covered. Uh, just like what Mr. Albert mentioned, I think it, it should be met. Uh, we should probably just re elaborate that MX nylon is slightly different or a specialty nylon as compared to the normal nylon. So, uh, other suggestions like using MX nylon in films to improve uh, processability of nylon films has been confirmed in Japan and even in Europe and US. So uh, for any customers who have any questions on all this, please feel free to contact us. I mean, we may be running out of time for this webinar, but we can always contact you and do a discussion offline. Uh, thank you very much, Ryan. I, I think we have a few more questions that came in. I think we can answer in a brief amount of time. So yes, uh, yes you yeah. can you can answer that um Albert we still we do still have time but um okay. sorry to jump in but um I think I will just um uh, uh highlight this to um you know um bahasa speaker speaker sure. so yeah sure. um buat bapak dan ibu apabila ada pertanyaan um dan mungkin ingin mempertanyakan hal-hal tersebut secara live mohon untuk raise hand nanti dari tim kami akan memastikan bapak dan ibu bisa bertanya secara live jadi kalau ada pertanyaan atau kalau misalnya memang ada pertanyaan juga dalam bahasa terus bapak dan ibu memang tidak yakin untuk menanyakan tersebut mohon dituliskan dalam bahasa nanti kami akan bantu untuk translate Um, selain itu, saat ini adalah kesempatan Bapak dan Ibu sekali lagi untuk bertanya kepada ahlinya, kepada Mitsubishi Gas Chemical. Apabila ada pertanyaan dan ingin raise hand, um, mohon agar dapat raise hand. Dan setelah itu kami akan mengaktifkan uh, mic Bapak dan Ibu supaya bisa bertanya langsung kepada tim dari Mitsubishi Gas Chemical. Oke, okay, um, that's it um, Albert. So um, back to you for the um, Q&A session. Yeah, there were some other questions that uh, asked whether Uh, is MX nylon replacing some chemical uh, additional product which is blended into PPPE and PT? So it is a, actually a replacement. So if you are talking about distinct uh, products, uh, distinct layers, actually MX nylon can be a distinct layer, right? And it can replace the barrier layer that you have either in uh, flexible or semi-rigid uh, sheets or in uh, PT bottles. It can have a distinct MX nylon layer. Actually, you find these products in um, uh, sparkling water. You don't realize it, but a lot of the sparkling water manufacturers around the world, the famous ones are actually using multi-layers. There's a distinct MX nylon layer in the middle. Uh, and at the same time, uh, in Indonesia, because of certain challenges with availability of equipment, and this is where we work with uh, partners like MOVA, where we are trying to dose MX nylon into PET layers. And at the moment, we are even trying to dose it into the olefins to achieve uh, uh, technical aspects like increased barrier properties, as well as also to increase the stiffness of the bottles. And, and this was shown by Ryan during his presentation where we showed that actually in the Americas, there's a big boom in the adoption of uh, actually bleach bottles and uh, using the ISBM process instead of the extrusion blown PP process. And uh, this is achieved with the addition of MX nylon into uh, the PET that stiffens the bottles, right? And that is a simple blend technology. And we think that that technology for adoption into PT ISBM for bleach can be a big potential for Indonesia. I hope those answer your question. Those answers are able to satisfy you at the moment. Uh, we will get back to you uh, with regards to further details after the webinar.
Thank you, uh, Ibu Katina. I think that is about it from MGC. I also I want to thank uh, uh, Mova Color and your team for supporting us. And I want to thank all the participants. And we are very grateful because we have 100 plus participants, uh, which is no mean feat by, uh, by nowadays because too many webinars to choose from. We are very grateful. We seek to work with you uh, and our partners to achieve uh, food stability supply stability and food security and safety uh, for Indonesia and Indonesians and Indonesia manufacturers. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Kat uh, Ibu Katina. I'll hand it back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Albert and um, um, Rian for the presentation. It was so wonderful. But um, before we really end this um, Q&A session, we actually have one um, person who raised hand here. Um, Pak Saifula, Pak Saifula, apakah ingin bertanya? Tadi sudah raise hand. Mungkin dari um, uh, uh, tim bisa dibantu unmute sebentar. Pak Saifula, apa masih di tempat? Apakah ingin bertanya? Oke, okay, I think he's not here. So there was one um, one man who raised his hand, but um, I'm not sure that he's still available. So, um, oke, okay, let's try again one last shot. Oke. Okay. Um, Goli boleh tolong di unmute Pak Saifullah atau um, Surcan boleh dibantu unmute Okay, so he's not here uh, But um, we have one question coming from um, Starlinger um, with regards to how to get this slide presentation from this webinar. Kepada Pak Ari Setiawan dan juga um, dan juga teman-teman lainnya yang hari ini sudah datang ke webinar kita hari ini, jangan khawatir untuk materi presentasi dan video akan dikirimkan kepada Bapak dan Ibu sekalian melalui email tentunya dua, setelah dua hari kerja. Selain itu, apabila tidak sempat, boleh juga mampir untuk ke, melihat langsung secara langsung di website kami di www.plasticandrubberindonesia.com. Nah, Uh, untuk hari ini kita sudah tiba di bagian akhir dari sesi Q&A, saya akan uh, menutup untuk sesi hari ini. Apabila Bapak dan Ibu masih memiliki pertanyaan, mohon untuk dapat mengirimkan kepada kami. Nanti kami akan sampaikan secara langsung kepada Mitsubishi Gas dan Mitsubishi Gas Chemical. Nah, uh, kita sekarang waktunya sudah sangat terbatas. Kami mohon apabila Bapak dan Ibu uh, masih ada pertanyaan lebih lanjut, kami mohon maaf bahwa kami belum dapat menjawab keseluruhan pertanyaan karena sekali lagi keterbatasan waktu. Kepada uh, kepada para pembicara, boleh mungkin memberikan closing statement uh, singkat saja sebelum kita akhiri kesimpulan atas webinar hari ini. Mungkin, oke, okay, um, to um, Albert or Ryan, if you have any um, closing statement, Before I close this um, webinar, do you want to add uh, anything else before that? If the, if there's if there's uh, anything else you want to add in? Yes, uh, thank you, Ibu Katina. So yeah, please feel free to contact us uh, for any possible collaborations or even R and D. We will try our best to support you. Uh, we are experienced uh, both in the Americas and uh, uh, Far East in uh, Eastern Asia. We have uh, multiple technologies. We hope to support you to realize uh, your capabilities, increase your capabilities, increase your product availabilities to enable in Indonesian food, non-food manufacturers uh, in their goal of extending shelf life and increasing profit, increasing uh, product uh, quality. We look forward to working with you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Informa and Pama Indo as well. And of course, thank you, Amova Color, for your support. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Albert, for the uh, uh, conclusion. Okay. Selamat, uh, terima kasih sekali lagi kepada para pembicara kita yang hari ini yang sudah sangat luar biasa untuk sharing mengenai tema kita hari ini. Kita juga sudah dapat gambaran yang cukup lengkap mulai dari dampak, gambaran hingga keunggulan dari materi-materi yang ada yang kita sebenarnya bisa aplikasikan di Indonesia. Sehingga memudahkan kita untuk identifikasi lagi langkah-langkah termasuk adaptasi ter semua pihak, terutama di industri plastik dan karet Indonesia 
saat ini. Semua ini merupakan solusi dari teknologi yang dapat digunakan untuk membantu meningkatkan supaya siklus kemasan bisa lebih panjang. Misalnya, otomatis waste-nya akan jadi lebih sedikit. Nah, salah satu kesimpulan yang saya dapat buat juga bahwa sebenarnya si pengguna dari produk itu sendiri yang harus ditata atau dikontrol. Bapak Ibu jangan buang sampah sembarangan ya. Dan juga seperti yang uh, 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 membawa botol minuman sendiri itu juga sebenarnya cukup membantu keadaan kita saat ini. Jadi jangan salahkan plastiknya, tapi salahkan sifat dari sepenggunanya. Saya rasa sebagai manusia kekuatan terbesar kita adalah kemampuan untuk mengadopsi, beradaptasi, dan kolaborasi yang juga dapat kita highlight di webinar pada pagi ini. Mari kita dukung industri kita, jadikan momentum ini untuk bangkit kembali. Mudah-mudahan dengan adanya joint collaboration antara pemain industri dapat menjadi kunci kita menghadapi new normal sehingga lebih produktif dan efisien, terutama dalam proses recovery roda ekonomi Indonesia ke depannya, khususnya di industri manufacture plastik dan karet Indonesia dari hulu ke hilir. Baik. Kami sampaikan juga terima kasih sekali lagi kepada para peserta yang telah hadir, para media, para narasumber, dan tentunya juga tak lupa saya sampaikan terima kasih kepada sponsor kami Mitsubishi Gas Chemical Singapura yang telah berkolaborasi bersama Plastik dan Rubber Indonesia. Semoga apa yang kami sampaikan melalui webinar hari ini dapat berguna dan menjadi solusi Bapak Ibu ke depannya. Kami mohon maaf apabila ada kekurangan pada webinar hari ini, tetap semangat, tetap sehat, tetap produktif untuk kita semua, dan kita berjumpa lagi di webinar bulan depan. Saya Kartina Lidiawati mewakili teman-teman dari Plastic and Rubber Indonesia dan Mitsubishi Gas Chemical hari ini pamit undur diri selamat makan siang dan terima kasih thank you thank you everyone thank you thank you everyone oke okay. Toli tolong di udah mulai dikurangin ha -ha. jadi solusi dari kita kebanyakan untuk pasti spanbon karena itu untuk recycle nya lebih gampang